What's up everyone? I'm Don Ferguson and welcome back for another kick-ass episode of Something New here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Okay, you know the deal. This is where I kind of grovel and ask you to subscribe to the Teak Life YouTube channel. So, do the thing, okay? On this week's episode, we are trying a tequila from Toronto. Wait a minute, everybody knows you can't make tequila in Toronto. It's like literally impossible. No, the tequila isn't made in Toronto. Actually, the founders are from Toronto and that's where it got its start. My friends, we're talking about Siempre Tequila, which is actually getting a lot of recognition in the mean streets all over the world because now this brand is international. Okay, so we're gonna dive into this. So sit back, relax, grab a tasty beverage, and let's learn a lot more about Siempre Tequila. Siempre tequila, ladies and gentlemen. So what does siempre mean? It means always. Siempre Añejo is from NAM 1438. It is 80 proof. It is aged 24 months in American oak bourbon barrels. I love me some bourbon. They use brick ovens to cook the agave and it's twice distilled with volcanic spring water. That just sounds amazing. Now, founders Alex LaCroix, or LaCroix, what, what is it? I don't know. And Monica Sanita, they made a decision in life. And I love this story. The, back, the backdrop to Siempre is just absolutely amazing. And they wanted more in life. So they took their life savings and a couple of credit cards, which really didn't amount to much, and they started Siempre Tequila. Now they started out with just one expression, the Blanco tequila, which actually received a lot of great reviews. They started with only 150 cases. And where did they begin this venture? Well, in Toronto, that's where they lived. So imagine starting a tequila brand in Canada, in Toronto. I don't think Toronto is the biggest tequila market in the world. So. That took some guts, but they did it, and now we're here. Let's taste the Añejo. Oh, we got a little pop. I always like it when I get that little pop. Now you know it if you watch the program. So we're going to pour. This is a, an Añejo rested for two years. So we want it to breathe. We want some life to come into it. And while we're talking about that, just put the bottle right there. See, and oh. The rose. We need to talk a little bit about the rose. So, Siempre is the rose that grew from adversity. And learning a lot about the founders and where they started and how they've grown the company, I'm sure that they had a lot of adversity, you know, creating this brand. But they move forward and they're doing some great, great things from what I've heard, what I've read about. They got a great following. Before we taste, we always talk about the bottle, and that's what the rose signifies. Now, also on it, it has a hand-drawn label, which is really cool because there are the roses on here, and it has flowers that are alive, flowers that are dead, so it represents beauty born out of struggle. Bottle's easy to hold, and on top of it, you can't really see, but it's inscribed. So it has a lot of cool detail to it, and I really love the label. It's very recognizable. They got some cool swag too. I want to wear a shirt one day. I want to see a play shirt. Color. So it's a very light, I would say golden color. Maybe, you know, a very, very light copper, something like that. But I'm, I'm going to rest with like a light straw. Now what was interesting is with an Añejo, when I popped it open, I didn't get a lot of the aromas oozing out, which is a little bit interesting. It's nothing to, you know, be scared of because there's a lot of bottles that I have. I was just uh, kind of expecting um, a little bit more billowing out. But as we know, I'm getting some vanilla, very light, very, oh, this is very, very light on the on the nose, some caramel, you're getting a hint of cooked agave, some spice, a little bit of the oak, 
Um, so it's not overpowering. The other good thing about it is the alcohol vapors are very light. So they're not burning your eyes or anything like that. Like I like, like I like to say a lot, they kind of slap your face, they punch in the eyeball. I, I like that this isn't powerful. This is very mellow and it is extremely refined. So really nice nose. The moment we've been waiting for our first taste. Mm. Wow, that's really light. Oh, there's like, there's like no burn. That is okay. Very interesting. So it is extreme. So it, just like the nose, this is extremely light in taste and especially in the finish. There is just not much pepper at all. I'm finally getting a little a little bit of that pepper but not much so that's fantastic so far go big oh so there's like some toffee a little bit of chocolate caramel there's like a toasted oak flavor which is super cool man it's almost like drinking creme brulee it's got a nice sweetness to it you get a touch of that agave, get a touch of the barrel, a little bit of the pepper to remind you, hey, I'm tequila. This is actually, this is very nice. Third time's always a charm for me. That's where I get everything. But yeah, I'm really getting some toffee, some caramel, a little bit of vanilla, a nice, very subtle honey sweetness, a little bit of that agave. I'm telling you, this is a pleasant sipper. This is one too that you could probably dilute with a couple of drops from an eyedropper of water. Or you could, if you wanted to chill it, you could too. I typically don't chill an Añejo, but I could see this being one. Don't interrupt me while I'm drinking. That's nice. Pleasant, it's got a nice finish to it, so I'm digging it, but I've had their Blanco before. I'm a big fan of Siempre Blanco. They're, I haven't had the Repo. Why haven't I had the Reposado? That's very interesting. We just jumped from one to the other. Don't mind me, I'm just drinking and I'm down to the last drop, just like Maxwell House. Okay, it's better than Maxwell House. And I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. Isn't that crazy? I'm an intoxicologist, I drink just not coffee but siempre añejo really good very light not overwhelming very smooth as well has some good flavors to it um it is not overly sweet which is something that i truly like their blanco is phenomenal you definitely have to try their blanco but i like what siempre is doing they're spreading this whole tequila culture all the way from toronto around the world and I like people drinking tequila. I know I like drinking tequila. Do you like drinking tequila? Well, that wraps up another episode of Something New here in the Teak Life Basement Bar. Be sure to follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Twitch, Switch, whatever, I don't know. Be sure to subscribe to the Teak Life YouTube channel. And if there's anything that you think we should review or you wanna send some swag, some hats, or if you want to send me some bottles, I'll take that too. Just hit that email. We'll see ya on the Teak Life Truth. We're going to talk aging. It's going to be fun. Thanks for watching all the way to the end for another Teak Life Truth. On this episode, we tried Siempre Añejo, which means aged. Now, I get this all the time, and I don't know if you do too. When I'm at a party or I'm out, I get the people that say, Oh, I don't drink dark liquor or oh I only drink white liquor so here's what we're going to do we're gonna talk about aged tequila this is an aged tequila and it is brown in color this is an unaged tequila which is clear in color to get to this you start with this are you following along okay so here's what happens Unaged tequila starts out as this, and then it goes into a barrel. We'll get into barrels in a minute. Once it's in the barrel, it sits, it rests, it ages, and then it comes out as this. As this. 
So what I'm saying is there is no light tequila and dark tequila difference. It's all tequila. It's not like comparing vodka to cognac. That is a big difference. Now a Blanco is unaged and it can be a Blanco up to two months in sitting in the stills, sitting in the vats before it's bottled. Most Blancos are distilled and bottled pretty much immediately. A Reposado is rested up to one year and then bottled. Most Reposados are aged about four months. That's the industry average. An Añejo is between one and two years of aging. And an Extra Añejo is over two years. But what I'm getting at is they all begin as a Blanco. So the only difference with it in the color, the taste profile, is because of the aging process in the barrel. Now here's where it gets really fun and really wacky. Most tequilas age their tequila in virgin <clears throat> or unused white American oak barrels. A few years ago, a new trend started and they were using whiskey barrels or ex-bourbon barrels such as Jack Daniels, Buffalo Trace. Now some are actually even using wine barrels. So they're using the casks from wine like a rosé or a chardonnay to give it a little bit more depth of character and make it really interesting. There's even a rumor of a tequila brand that is coming out with a bourbon whiskey. Can you imagine that? Who would do such a thing? The crazy people that love tequila. Like, like this guy. I'm them. So anyway, that's the difference between a light tequila and a dark tequila. So tell your friends now you know the difference. It's all tequila. It's all good. It's all delicious. Just drink it and shut up. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drink and shut up. I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.